feels great. So Alan brought his son here to our clubhouse. There's a fucking bullet. There's a bullet? Yes. Oh, so someone got shot. It's a fucking bullet. What the fuck? Well, we have shotguns at this many times. Yeah, but eventually I'm going to try to... Where, where do you see a bullet? Right there. Right there. Hmm. So, ladies. Yes. Me and Alan are going to tell the stories. Sit down, get back. <laughs> you to sit on mommy's lap? Alan's no. Gonna, Alan is going to start. Please, baby. It's <laughs> a big fork. Go ahead, Alan. What story do you want me to start with? Anyone that comes off your mind. All right, fine. Always in the boxcar, or talking about the boxcar, the first story that comes to my mind is the Godzilla story. <laughs> the Godzilla story? <laughs> We were what, 14 and 16? Okay. Yep. Something like that. Alan. Oh, hell no. Shoe. Uh-huh. Shoe. Kill it. Uh -huh. Smash it. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, but no. no. There's another one coming right towards you guys because you're right there. It's up under the edge. What? I'm so sorry, creature, but I don't want you on me. Anyways, continue. We were out here maybe 14 and 16. I was 14, Matt was 16-ish. And we were hanging out in here. Dada. Of course. I mean, it's a box car. It's built solid. You know, this was like our fortress of solitude. Nothing could get us in here. Ah! Not a damn thing. There weren't nearly this many holes. It was all nice and well kept up. And had a couple couches, some chairs. Had our little fire pit, same one I'm using now. But we've been hearing noises all night, like knocks on the side of the boxcar and crap like that. And so uh, we went, started looking around outside from inside the box car, and um, we didn't see anything except for some shadows moving around outside. And uh, we started cracking some jokes and shit, and then we heard some pretty solid, heavy sounding knocks on the bottom of the box car. So I went over to the door where we're sitting right now. Obviously, that's our right side, and then we've got our left side. And I went over to the left side of the boxcar, went up to the door, laid down on the floor of the boxcar, looked underneath of it. Keep in mind, this is maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I look under it and I go, Harold, good <laughs> Dude, this is true. I'm going to get... This is a true fucking story. Lay down. Or sit. All those years ago, man. I oh. said I was going to bring my kid here. My kids. Mama. And we were going to hang out and sit by the fire and just fucking chill. Mama. And look. My wife here. and my son are here and we're well, sitting by the fire kids. chilling. And one of them bacon in the oven. And a bun in the oven. <laughs> We're just sitting here by the fire, chilling. Oh, help me with him. He's gonna get himself burned. Come here. Oh, jeez. 
We've had a lot of good times out here. Yeah, we did. A lot of them. <laughs> Spent a lot of nights out here. Made a lot of Sit. fires. Sit. <laughs> Baby. Oh. Hold him or something. He's gonna hurt himself. No, you sit down. That's a hot. You're gonna get hurt. You're gonna get hurt. You be careful. Just throwing yourself down. Fire looks great on this camera. Yeah. So it's your turn to hold it. It's my turn to tell a story. How well can you see me? Your light's making the, uh... <coughs> there we go. That's perfect, actually, in the firelight. All right. I'm going to start. I'm going to tell us. I'm going to say a scary story. This, this made me and Alan run from the cemetery, across the field, and back home. So... Our dumbasses decided to go to the cemetery late at night. I mean, aren't, aren't we just fucking special? And uh, we got this bright idea to walk to the cemetery with. Uh, he had the mozzie maggot, which had no fucking bullets. I had the. Uh, Muzzle loader had no fucking ammo for that either, but we did carry knives just in case. So we went to this box car, not our, to the box car, but to the cemetery. Our guns were meant more for clubs. Yep. Than anything else. <laughs> yep, it was. So we went to the cemetery. It was uh, starry for a little bit, and then once we went inside, it got cloudy real fast. And uh, we were looking around. Didn't see, any, didn't see anything. Didn't hear anything until five minutes of <laughs> until five minutes of being inside that cemetery. We heard footsteps, and we instantly went on guard. We had each other's backs, and. Uh, Footsteps drew closer and closer. And didn't we hear like a fucking scream? Uh huh. We heard a lot of screams coming from that fucking cemetery. A lot of fucking screams. So we fucking booked it. We, we fucking booked it the hell out of there. And, uh. Running back. I didn't realize this until later, but uh, he lost his phone. It's still out there in the fucking field. Because he started... He's like, oh shit, I lost my fucking phone! And even with hearing the footsteps, and the scream, and voices, and all that shit, I still went out to that fucking field <laughs> yeah. by the cemetery to look for my goddamn phone. <laughs> Never found it. <laughs> yep, never found it. That's way too smoky in here. I say... It's burning my eyes. We venture out for a little bit. I say we show them the silo. Hiya! Okay. Alright. Yeah, it's kind of burning my eyes, too. Burning your eyes. <laughs> Goodbye, fire, for now! <laughs> Every night, baby. Alright, I just wanna put my fucking 